This is TK Coleman, and you're tuning in to TK's Two Cents. Today, we're going to talk about writer's block and replenishing the creative well. Let's go to tweet number one. Writer's block, or any other kind of block, is reducible to afraid of creating something that isn't up to my standards block. We always have creative ideas and impulses to work with. The hard part is learning to love them and nourish them even when they seem ugly and unworthy. My question for you when it comes to your art or whatever it is you want to create is not, are you good enough? But are you willing to be bad enough in order to be good? The price we must pay in order to be competent is the willingness to look incompetent for a time. The price we pay in order to know things is the willingness to look like someone who does not currently understand. You cannot be great and look great at the same time. One of those has to give. Are you willing to look uh, not so great in order to actually become great? Or are you so determined to hold on to the appearance of greatness, the appearance of always being on, and even willing to compromise your actual greatness for the sake of those appearances? Think about when people go to the gym. I know sometimes we can dress up and make ourselves appear really awesome and, and pretty and amazing when we go to the gym. But ultimately, if you want to go to the gym and have a productive workout, you've got to be willing to get sweaty. You've got to be willing to look not your best. The way you have to look when you go to the gym and you hit those weights or you hit the treadmill or whatever it is you do, the way you get to look is different from the way you get to look when you're going to a party or when you're going to, um, you know, a formal, uh, uh, I, 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 need, I need to improve my vocabulary for the types of events where you dress up, but you get what I'm saying. Y'all get what I'm saying, right? But when you go to the gym, why are you willing to look like that? Why are you willing to look sweaty? Because it's not about how you look. It's about what you want to achieve. It's about how you want to develop yourself. So there's a, there's a quote by John Maxwell. He says, get over yourself. Everyone else has. And that is the key to overcoming writer's block and creator's block. All right, let's talk about this for a second. Sometimes we say things and we sound very convincing. We actually believe ourselves. We say things like, ah, I have nothing to say. I have nothing to write about. There are no words coming to me. And what we really mean is, although there are words coming to me, I am judging these words as being useless, as being worthless, as being the kind of words that won't make me look the way that I want to look, or as being the kinds of words that will make me disappointing to others or make me disappointed to myself. But we have thoughts, we have words, for instance, I don't have anything to say right now. Well, that's something to say. I'm really struggling facing the blank page. I feel so unworthy of this task. Well, that's something to say. And it's amazing where that kind of thought can leave you or lead you if you're willing to put that on the page, if you're willing to be honest and transparent about that. The great creators, the great artists are not people who always have fancy thoughts and amazing feelings. They are people who are willing to take the thoughts and feelings that they have, messy though they may be, and work with them in a way to create something meaningful. They are the people that are willing to show up and present themselves and their work to the world, even when they don't feel beautiful. And newsflash, we don't always feel beautiful, my friends. We don't always feel that our ideas are beautiful, that our thoughts are beautiful, that our artistic expressions are beautiful that our words and that our paintings and that our songs are beautiful. And that doesn't mean that you need to put everything out there without any indiscretion whatsoever and pretend like it's as good as anything else that you've done. But it's about not telling ourselves a story that we have nothing to offer. And it's about recognizing that we always have something to offer. But the question is, do we have the courage to bless it? Do we have the courage to bring forth new possibilities in our lives by taking these ugly ideas and ugly feelings that we have and blessing them by saying, I love you anyway, even when you don't make me look good and I'm gonna take care of you 
I'm going to nurture you and I'm going to work with you because this is what I have and this is all I need. Because if I nurture you and love you, you will take me somewhere else and you will give me more. That's how creative ideas work. So if you want to write something, you want to create something and you feel stuck, my challenge to you would be, well, what are those thoughts and ideas you have that you are rejecting because they're not good enough? And what are some ways that you can experiment with those ideas? What are some ways that you can play with those ideas? If you've ever participated in any brainstorming sessions, you know that some of the best ideas come from the bad ones. It's not about starting off with a good idea. It's about using whatever it is you have as an opportunity to get the energy flowing and then approaching things playfully. So maintain that spirit of play, maintain that spirit of open-mindedness, maintain that spirit of non-judgmental compassion towards yourself and the perceived ugliness of your ideas. Lean into that and watch the magic unfold. Let's go to tweet number two. There is no substitute for deliberately, for time deliberately spent alone. Solitude, let me start that over. There is no substitute for time deliberately spent alone. Solitude and inner communion heals a multitude of ills. Don't deprive your everyday self of your deeper, extraordinary self. There is a song by one of my favorite jazz musicians, Kurt Elling, and it's called Never Never Land. And there is a passage of the song where he says, my friends, every day we go to our everyday work, we return to our everyday home and sit in the everyday chair. We drink from the everyday cup, but we never allow ourselves to go into the extraordinary places in our hearts and our minds. I ask you, my friends, how do you think a book is written? How do you think a song is born? How do you think a race is won? How do you think the world gets started? If a little daydreaming is dangerous, the cure for it is not to dream less, but to dream more, to dream all the time. What he's talking about in this song is how we can easily live so much of our lives at the surface, only knowing our surface self, our surface thoughts, surface words, surface feelings, but we never take that time to go within and to tap into that inner space where a song comes from, where a novel comes from, where a business idea comes from, where a groundbreaking solution to a problem we've wrestled with so long comes from, where inner clarity comes from, where simply knowing where you stand on a matter comes from. We are not, in our, we are not our best selves when we live our lives in a frenzy state where we are constantly reacting and responding to external stimuli, meeting requests, meeting demands, trying to put out fires. We were not merely meant to problem solve. We are also meant to create. We are not merely meant to eliminate and manage the things that we don't want. We are here to bring forth the things that have never been said, never been done, never been performed. And the only way we can tap into that is by taking time to unplug from the world, taking time to go within and getting to know our own thoughts, getting to know our feelings and intuitions beyond thought, and getting to know the voice of God and how that voice is calling us in a new direction. So many things that we worry about, so many things that we stress about, so many things that seem really difficult and insurmountable can be readily resolved if we got out of the mode of putting out fires and working really hard, and we simply took some time to be alone. Underneath the surface, you have a deep, extraordinary self that offers you so much value, priceless value. Don't deprive yourself of interacting with that deep, extraordinary self. Be willing to take time every single day to go beyond the surface. And then when you return to your work, or to your friends, to your relationships, you'll be able to offer them more substance and be available to them in a way that cannot be measured by time alone. You will be available to them by being a soul that is fully present. That's how you overcome writer's block. That's how you replenish the creative well. And those are TK's two cents for the day. I thank you all for tuning in. I really appreciate every one of you who take the time to watch this show and support my work. I encourage you to please hit the like button or the subscribe button. 
And if you have a comment, if you have feedback, if you have a question, if there's something you want to hear me talk about, please include that in the comments and please share this with a family member or friend that you think might benefit from listening to the show. All right, y'all. Take care. Until next time. Peace.